In this video, we are going to learn how to draw shear force diagram and bending movement diagram for a cantilever beam subjected to uniformly varying load as shown in figure. The uniformly varying load or also known as gradually varying load is a type of load which is spread over a beam in a such a manner that the rate of loading varies uniformly from point to point along the length of beam as shown here. So in today's lecture, we will solve a numerical problem based on this type of loading. So the statement is given as draw shear force diagram and bending movement diagram for a cantilever beam AB of 2 meter span is subjected to gradually varying load from 2 kN per meter to 5 kN per meter as shown in figure. So this is the cantilever beam AB of length 2 meter which carries gradually varying load which has load 2 kN per meter at free end and it increases gradually up to load 5 kN per meter at the fixed end of cantilever beam. So for this setup we have to draw the shear force and bending movement diagram. So first of all I will draw the free body diagram for this beam section. So for solving this numerical problem, first we have to convert this gradually varying load into point load whose value will be equal to the area of this trapezoid. So the point load equal to area of this trapezoid and we can calculate the area of this trapezoid by doing the addition of the area of this rectangle and area of this triangle. So the area of rectangle will be base into height and the area of triangle will be 1 by 2 base into height where base of this triangle is 2 meter and height of this triangle is 3 kN per meter and here base of this rectangle is 2 meter and height of this rectangle is 2 kN per meter. So by calculating this will get the point load of 7 kN. Now this converted point load will be act at the centroid of this trapezoid. So next we have to find out the centroid distance of this trapezoid. So we can find out this distance by this formula. Where P1 is the area of this rectangle and P2 is the area of this triangle and x1 is the centroid distance of this rectangle which is half of the base and x2 is the centroid distance of this triangle from left end which is 1 by third of the base of this triangle. So here x1 equal to half of 2 meter and x2 equal to 1 by 3 of base that is 1 by 3 of 2 meter. So by calculating this we will get centroid distance of this trapezoid equal to 0.85714 meter. Now this type of problem we are going to solve in three steps. In the first step we have to calculate the value of support reaction force RA. So to calculate this value I will use the condition of equilibrium that is summation Fy equal to 0. That means addition of all the forces in the vertical axis equal to 0. While doing the addition of all vertical forces, I will consider upward forces as positive and downward forces as negative. Here R is the vertical reaction force acting on the beam in the upward direction. So I will add this force with positive sign and the converted point load of 7 kN force is acting on the beam in the downward direction. So I will add this 7 kN force with negative sign. So from this I will get the value of reaction force RA equal to 7 kN. So now with the help of this calculated value of RA I will further calculate the values of shear forces at all the points of beam. So the next step is calculations of shear forces. 
and the sign convention for shear force calculation is upward forces are considered as positive and downward forces are considered as negative here you should remember that while calculating the shear force at a particular point load you can calculate shear force values for left side and right side of that particular point load but while calculating the shear force at uniformly varying load you should calculate shear force values at start point and end point of uniformly varying load that is shear force at point a and shear force at point b we need to calculate but in this diagram at point a the reaction force is acting on the beam and since this reaction force is a point load hence we have to calculate the shear force values at left side and right side of point a so here i will start the shear force calculation from left side of point a that is sf at a to the left so as you can see there is no force is acting at the left side of point a therefore sf at a to the left equal to 0 so to draw shear force diagram i will first draw horizontal reference line of 0 kN shear force and here i'll mark the point of 0 kN shear force on the reference line that is shear force at point a to its left is 0 kN now if i go to the section to the right of point a that is sf at a to the right then there is reaction force ra which is acting on the beam in the upward direction so as per the sign convention i will consider upward force as positive so here the shear force is plus 7 kN here as the shear force value is positive so i'll mark this 7 kN shear force with a point above the reference line of 0 kN shear force and i will connect these two points with a vertical line now point b is the end point of uniformly varying load so i am taking section to the point b and i'll calculate the shear force at point b that is sf at point b and here i'll carry forward previous value of shear force up to point a to its right which is 7 kN and to the left side of point b there is uniformly varying load that we had converted into point load of 7 kN in the downward direction so as per the sign convention i will consider this downward force as negative so i will add this point load as minus 7 kN so here plus 7 kN minus 7 kN gives me the value of shear force at 0 kN so i will mark this point of 0 kN shear force at point b and here if you can see between point a and point b there is uniformly varying load hence to draw the shear force diagram i will indicate uniformly varying load with a parabolic curve so i will connect these two points with a parabolic curve and here in the shear force diagram whatever the portion drawn above the reference line i will show this portion with positive sign so here i have completed the shear force diagram now the next step is calculation of bending moment so bending moment at a section of beam is calculated as the algebraic sum of moment of all the forces acting on one side of the section so to calculate bending moment we can start either from left end of beam or from right end of beam here i will start from right side so whenever you are calculating the bending moments you should remember these conditions so here for cantilever beam the condition is at the free end of cantilever beam the bending moment will be zero that is bm suffix b equal to 0 kN meter so to draw bending moment diagram first i will draw the reference line of bending moment 0 kN meter so i'll mark this value with a point on the reference line So now we have to calculate bending moment at point A. So here, in case of cantilever beam, while you are doing the calculation for bending moment, 
at a particular point we should always add movement of all the forces present from the free end of cantilever beam up to that particular point at which we are calculating the bending moment and for bending moment calculation our sign convention is for sagging effect of beam the force is considered as positive and for hugging effect of beam the force is considered as negative so the bending moment at point a that is b of suffix a equal to algebraic sum of the moment of all the forces at right side of point a so here at right hand side of point a there is uniformly varying load which we had converted into point load of 7 kN which is acting on the beam in the downward direction due to this downward force the beam shows hugging effect and for hugging effect of beam i will consider this force as negative his the amount of force is minus 7 kN into distance from point of action of force that is 0.85714 meter therefore after calculating this will get minus 5.99 kN meter so as it is negative value of bending moment hence i will mark the point of bending moment below the reference line of bending moment 0 kN meter and to draw bending moment diagram i will indicate uniformly varying load with a cubic curve hence i will join these two points with a cubic curve and i will connect these two points with a vertical line now since i can see this bending moment diagram is drawn below the reference line hence i will show this portion by negative sign so here we have completed the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for this cantilever beam